What's going on guys? Welcome to another bike of the week. I think it's going to be Thursday that this video is released a day late, but that's all right. So today we're going to be doing a Yamaha Warrior. Now I know everybody's going to be saying, oh, Yamaha Warriors aren't fast or they're not the most cool quad in the world. Dude, Yamaha Warriors are badass quads and it doesn't have to be the fastest quad in the world to be a cool build. So bike of the week is where I take one of your sus subscriber rides that you send in uh, we go over the build and I kind of show the process and videos and stuff like that and just kind of share your guys' builds with the world. And then at the end of the video, I will analyze the build and kind of say if I would do anything differently and kind of what I think of the build. Here is the orig original condition of the Warrior when it was purchased. So this was purchased by a subscriber named Jason. His Instagram is Horror Dad. And the Yamaha Warrior is a super classic build. Most people know what a Yamaha Warrior is. It's kind of like a mid-level quad like not quite entry level but it's also not you know like a high performance level either so they think they were made from 1987 all the way to 2004 and then in 2005 i think they switched it over to the raptor 350 which is essentially the same quad there's a couple minor updates at most notably being the plastics where they actually made the raptor 350 look like a raptor so the warrior came with a 350 cc air-cooled motor and a six-speed uh, manual transmission it had reverse Nothing crazy, nothing like super powerful, anything. Just a really reliable quad. They're really well known for being super reliable and uh, just having almost zero maintenance. I can remember as a kid going and looking at Warriors because I used to want a Warrior so bad. I don't know why. <laughs> I just really wanted a Warrior. And uh, I remember going to a dealer and there was a used Warrior there and they were like, dude, if you want something that wants literally zero maintenance, this is the quad you want. And you know, I've never actually owned a Warrior. I've, I've, actually, I've actually never even ridden a regular stock Warrior, uh, but that's what I hear across the board is that they're very reliable. Now I've, I've had some experience with a Raptor 350, so I guess I could sort of say that I've ridden a Raptor and I've also ridden a highly modified Raptor, the one that uh, Weston from DRW Performance owns. Now that one's kind of, I can't even qualify that as a Warrior because it makes like 40 horsepower, which is way more than an OEM Raptor, which is, or not Raptor, Warrior, which I guess is probably, I don't even know, you know, when I was trying to find that information after I rode Weston's, they put out like anywhere between like 10 and 20 horsepower, really on the low side. So a 40 horsepower one is almost not even comparable. So basically no Warrior experience on my end. Anyways, let's get into the build. So let's go back to this. This is the way that it was purchased pretty bit plain and basic. You can see some stress marks on the plastic, especially in this first picture. It looks like it was possibly rolled. And uh, Jason bought this on Marketplace and he just kind of enjoyed it for the first year that he had it. And I believe he's got some pictures riding around just the way that it was. Basic quad. Looks like it's even got the OEM muffler on there. Totally stock. Probably just a fun quad to rip around on. Powder coated the rims here, you can see. Now moving on to the teardown, you can see Starting to strip pieces off here. It looks like he got some Alva Nerf bars on there with some orange nets. He's tearing it down here. And I'm kind of just like analyzing these pictures as I'm looking through here. And I like, usually when I'm looking at pictures of a quad, like usually when I'm looking to purchase it, I like to look at the frame and look for rust and whatnot. And this frame looks like it's in really good shape, especially down on these lower rails and everything. You can see a little bit of rust up here, a little bit up here. Uh, I think this is dirt, but this frame actually looks like it's in really good shape. I would bet this is kind of on the the, uh, the lower end of ours. There's just plastics and whatnot. Here's the other side of the frame, same thing. And here's actually a better look of the frame. You can see this is in pretty damn good shape. Looks like you got a pretty good purchase here. There's another shot. There's the motor sitting out on the bench. Looks pretty clean. And I can tell just by the way everything is organized here, Jason does. He's probably pretty meticulous just by the way he's got everything laid out. Looks like everything's nice and cleaned and organized. All right, now before I get into the parts and everything and the actual build of the squad, I just want to read a little bit of what Jason sent me. So uh, just I'm going to skim through this because it's quite lengthy. It's about four pages long. But basically, uh, Jason gave me a small background on his life, and he's obviously a family man. You can see here he says he's just an average guy married with a father, and he's a father of four kids. And he grew up riding ATVs since he was about nine years old, uh, learning on a Kawasaki Bayou 220, which those are pretty cool little quads. And he also rode three wheelers and mainly four by fours. And then a few years back, 
you wanted to get into sport quads and being a father of four, his funds are limited, which we can all relate to. So he was looking for more of the entry level quads, 400DX, 300DX and Warriors. So his son was riding a TTR 90 at the time and he wanted to get something that he could ride alongside of his son. His son is only seven years old, by the way. So he does some powder coating on the side. Well, he actually used to do it more frequently, but now he just uh, kind of does it for himself personally. Here is the bullhorn bumper that he chose for it. He's got that charcoal color on there. This looks like the rear disc hub. And here's a bunch of the parts laid out. This is a video kind of panning over the parts. You can see the metal sparkle uh, with the sun reflecting in it. I really like the charcoal color, uh, specifically because the metal sparkle really pops in there, but you can see it in the orange too. And there's something about having a dark color and a bright color. The contrast just looks really good. He even saved those disc rotors or the, the disc guards. I feel like those usually right in the trash. <laughs> a lot of people just get rid of them. So he's just kind of going over the parts there. Definitely looking clean. Linkage pieces, spindles, carrier. Nice. Here you can see them all laid out. It's always cool when you get stuff back from powder coating, man. Got the Alba Nerf bars powder coated, orange nets looking fresh. Now these Nerf bars are for a Raptor 350. I'm not sure they make these for the Warrior. They might, um, but he got them for the War for the Raptor and that way he could upgrade to the Raptor pegs, which I think are a little bit more like beefier and aggressive than the Warrior. All right, so now let's get into the assembly of this thing. So he's got all this stuff back from powder coating. This is probably one of the most exciting times of a build is when things start to come together. Oh, this is the best creeper right here. <laughs> I have this exact same creeper. My sister got it for me for Christmas one year. I love that thing. It like folds up into a seat or a lion creeper. Anyways, back to the build. You can see he's getting everything together here. It's looking nice and clean. This uh, rear sprocket looks just like uh, the one on the Banshee with the little uh, bolt stays, the three piece ones. Looking good. Now he's got it as an actual roller. And again, this is a very exciting stage of the process when you actually have it on all four wheels. It's got a little video here walking around. Just a super clean, I really do like these colors. And I'm kind of wondering without the suspension in there, how he, uh, how the bike is being held up. I'm gonna guess that it's just these fittings are really tight. Sometimes when you get stuff back from powder coat, that's kind of normal. Clean, man. I like it. Now he's got the motor in there and it's actually starting to look like something. I like that bullhorn bumper too. There, there's a better shot of the bumper. Pro taper bars. Yeah, it's looking good, man. He's got a custom airbox cover with, it looks like an, kind of like a um, outerwear screen on it. Here's one, another clip, just kind of a walk around. It's got that DRW case saver on there, I see. And now taking a step back, actually, this is the exhaust system. He did like a total refresh on this thing. You can see it's whooped, man. The uh, <laughs> the exhaust packing looks like a hairball that's been uh, dug up from the tub from like 100 years ago. <laughs> it looks horrible. And here it is. I believe he Cerakoted this black and he has got the orange tip. Looks basically brand new. Another shot of the Nerf bars, some new parts. He's got a new starter there. Uh, looks like a, a front master cylinder and he's got a drw skid plate if you guys are looking for protection on anything i highly recommend drw they've got a uh, sprocket guard here rear disc guard these are awesome pieces man i run that stuff on the 250r and it's the best man all the sprocket guards i have always drw performance see that looks cool man i really like the way that drw designed the sprocket guard it kind of looks like a six shooter just a unique look as opposed to just like a skid plate kind of sets you apart from the crowd that looks nice, man. Underside, looking super clean. He's got the DRW skid on there now. He's got some A-arm skids. I don't know if they're Ricochet or what brand those are. Looks really good, though. Now, these are the first start videos. It's 
Probably got to do a little bit of tweaking to get it to idle. There we go. Now it's sounding good. I don't know that he did any motor work to the quad to this point. I think it's just jetted, probably a uh, filter and the, the slip on, of course. Sounds good. no rattles or uh, weird sounds as he's driving by <laughs> always a good sign and at this point i think he just enjoyed the quad for a little bit he does do a little bit more stuff looks good man looks good out on the trails i like his helmet too i think th these are the same exact goggles i have blur same color and everything that's clean man i appreciate when people take the time to take some some really nice pictures like this and I think the flat black plastics also kind of set off with the orange frame and everything. It's just a clean looking quad. You guys probably recognize this dude's quad right here, man. That's Pete Hager and his buddy's KFX. So uh, Jason actually went riding. He's in a couple of the riding videos of Pete's. There's Pete's quad again. There he is, man. There's Pete Hager himself. <laughs> and this is, I think, is actually the thumbnail that Pete used in his video. You can see the warrior here. This is kind of interesting too, uh, for size comparison, as opposed to the Raptor 700. So you got Pete's Raptor 700 here and the Warrior 350 here. And a Warrior isn't a small quad, but you can see it's a good bit smaller. It's narrower, a little bit lower, it looks like, than the Raptor 700. And uh, just like the overall profile is just a little bit smaller. And I believe Pete's Raptor is stock width. So this would be like OEM as far as height and width and everything. Got her all muddy. It's good to see people taking out their, their toys even after spending all the work and stuff. Making them look so pretty. A lot of people, they don't want to get them dirty, but you got it, man. That's what they're for. So now he's getting some new tires and rims, and then he gets some suspension stuff. So you can see here he's got GBCs for the front and GBCs for the back. I think these are the Ground Buster 3s. I almost bought these for the 250R. I was really close. Or was it the KFX? One of the quads, I wanted to get these, and I ended up getting the Obors, which are awesome tires, but... Uh, I'd like to try these ground busters sometime. And these are kind of like the classic style fronts from GBC. He's got some new rims and he does this kind of a gunmetal metal flake uh, rim color. It's like a silver gunmetal-ish color, like a dark silver. I really like the look of it though. And they go nice, man. I think that's a real clean look. Yeah, that looks good. Really good pictures, man. So these are YFZ 450R shocks, just OEM ones, which are great shocks out of the box. And these are American Star Racing 400EX A-arms. Uh, these will fit on a Warrior, I think with no modification, I believe. And the plus, these are plus twos for a 400EX. And on the Warrior, that equates to about a plus four. You can see all the stuff he's got here. He's got the Streamline brake line kits. And now with the stuff on there, it looks kind of crazy, man. <laughs> like it doesn't look right. You can see it's like super wide. It actually looks almost like the uh, the wheel is sticking out from the fender. But wait before you guys make your judgments, man. He, he does correct that. It looks kind of cool, though. Almost like a drag racing kind of look with the, uh, the front end squatting down like that. So at this point, he sent out the shocks to this company called Jogaka. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. He got dual rate springs, had the springs powder coated and just totally refreshed. And they're also long travel now. So these shocks are a little bit longer. There's a company, Jogaka. I'm, I'm, I haven't heard of them, but apparently they do, they do some really good work. Really clean looking shocks. And I like that he matched that silver, the same that he's got on the rims, he's got on the springs. Now it's looking good, man. Something about suspension and A-arms, when it's all nice and clean and done up with good colors, just looks good. 
and you'll see now it looks good. You know, when it was squatting down, the wheels are sticking out too far and everything. Now it actually looks like it should. Really clean. That's a beautiful picture right there, man. I'd be really curious to ride this thing and actually see if it handles normal because you know the quad's not designed to have this wide of a footprint and even aftermarket companies usually i mean you see plus twos the warrior i think parts are a little bit more scarce when it comes to aftermarket stuff uh, because a lot of people don't really modify them not the way that you would see them modify like a 450 or a 400 ex or an ltz or something like that you can see right there the stance I don't really think it looks out of place at all with the, uh, the super wide A arms. It's got some snow pictures. This thing's probably a blast to ride, man. You don't have to have a crazy fast quad to have fun. See right here, I think the you can really see the color of the rims. I, I really, I think it looks really good. I did want to go over the mod list he has here. You can see he's got the colors for his powder coat, the American Star A Arms 2018 YFC 450R shocks, um, 2002 Banshee shock in the rear, GBCs, Banshee streamlined stick style, uh, stabilizer, Pro Taper, CR low bend bars, ODI lock on grips, Raptor 350 Nerf bars. Uh, they, he has the Raptor 350 pegs. PRM Summit for YFC 450R carb or YFC 450 carb. Alba brake pads, streamlined stainless steel extended dual lines. Uh, Alba front rotors and rear rotors. IMS direct shifter. The airbox was modded. We saw that. And the stock header to a Raptor 350 FMF, which was repacked, ceramic coated. And his gearing is 1440. You guys will have to let me know in the comment section below. I don't know if that's stock or not for a Yamaha Warrior and a DID chain. All right, now we got a couple of videos. another angle there that you can see the suspension it, it just looks right it really I'm surprised that it it looks as good as it does I, you would think it would look weird being that wide near Pete Hager, if I'm not mistaken, because I think he does some ditch riding, which I know is uh, Pete Hager used to do that or still does. I'm not sure. And we got one more video here. This one's really cool. That's sick, dude. I can always appreciate a little edit like this.
like it, man. And I think these are just uh, some of the pictures that we've already reviewed. But you can tell that he cares about this quad, man. Anybody who takes the time to take all these pictures and all the attention to detail and everything, and that's one of the reasons that I chose this as the bike of the week for this week because you can just tell Jason really cares about this quad and you know making it something special. And I wanted to share that with you guys. And the other thing that I think is so special about this is that you don't have to have a crazy build, like I was saying, to have a special quad and have a good story. And the like the way that he did this, it wasn't just purchasing all the parts at one time and all of a sudden making it a crazy quad. He bought the quad the way it was. He rode it for a while just as he bought it. Then he started uh, refreshing stuff. He was changing things here and there, buying performance parts here and there, uh, powder coating things. And then eventually he finally stripped it down and powder coated the frame and everything. Then he went rode that for a while went and got the tires, you know, went got the suspension and there's more stuff that he plans to do. I know he wants to do motor mods in the future. So I feel like a lot of people, that's the way they do things. It's kind of like the work in progress thing and uh, the never ending project. And then one day you finally have a beautiful build. So I think a lot of people can relate to that. And that's why I wanted to share it. And just like I said, he seems like a really good guy. He's got his four kids and everything. He's they're all into riding and everything. And he actually shared a good bit of his family photos and whatnot. Uh, I think he has two sons and two daughters. They have this little Teo Teo 125 and they have a nice little spot where they rip around. They got a couple videos, but I mean, look at this guy. I think he's like seven years old, eight years old. And uh, they have some nice land. You can see like the, uh, in the back, some sweeping tracks and stuff. You probably have a lot of fun out here, man. Look at that thing. <laughs> you get it all muddy. And I'll tell you what, man, these kids rip. I'll show you, they got a couple videos in here. I think that's all of his kids right there. And I just really like that the whole family is involved. Um, you know, really trying to bring back the sport quad industry. And I think showing stuff like this is really important to see how much fun you can have. There's the Warrior, I believe, as they bought it. That's like the OEM condition. But that's a cool picture right there. These kids are probably going to be beasts, man. Whenever you start this young, you know they're going to be good. <laughs> and something else that really shows the good character of Jason, he, he specifically wanted to mention in his message to me, he said, I especially need to be thankful for my understanding wife for putting up with me on this. So you know what that's like, man, when you've got a significant other, when you're out in the garage tinkering nonstop. It's always good when you've got some, some support and understanding there. And he says, I also need to thank Weston at DRW, Stephen M, Ed, JD, and any of the other Warrior Faithful that let me bother them and pick their brain in putting, when putting together my machine. And also, um, outside of searching and reading old forum posts from years ago, the experienced guys that have been helping me on these for years helped out huge. And that is so true, man. That's how I learned so much is people helping me out. Like you guys saw all the stuff I went through with Dave Moore, and I still call Dave Moore on a regular basis just people that help out other people you, you really you don't understand how much that can help you know push people forward and uh really just spread your knowledge and everything so hopefully this video can inspire you guys to go out and do your own builds and uh the, you know there's a great community out there to help you guys out too okay so now that we've seen the build i'll give you my deep detailed analysis um as far as let's put putting things into context let's say that i wanted to build a yamaha warrior Excluding the performance mods, you know, not trying to make some kind of like beast out of it, but just a good, reliable trail machine that you don't have to go out and be worrying every single time you're riding it that something's going to break down. I think he did a really good job. And honestly, man, I probably wouldn't do really anything differently. I'm sure I would have done little things here and there, tweaking the colors and whatnot. But I think the colors that he chose were really good. I think he was originally going to go with a gold and black chrome and he switched up to the orange i think the colors look good man i think everything complements it each other um i think he, he chose pretty decent parts on here i like the bumper i think that's really unique you guys know i like to do unique stuff uh the nerf bars maybe i would go different although the warrior i don't know that they really have that many options and the Alba nerf bars you know what they're they're cheaper on the uh, spectrum of parts but they they work well i have them on the kfx 450r and although the pegs were kind of not the greatest after I modified that, they're pretty good. And he has Raptor 350 pegs on there anyways. 
He's got a streamlined stabilizer. I would maybe see if you could get a precision instead of a, a stick style. I don't know that you can, but then you're kind of, you know, that's a budget thing too. You're, you're really, that's an expensive piece. Suspension wise, I mean, I would get the rear shock done. He does plan to do that. Um, but as far as like doing that instead of going with Elka's, I think that's, I'm becoming a really big fan of sending suspension out and having the modified dual rate, triple rate, stuff like that, as opposed to purchasing like Elka or Axis or something. I have nothing against that. Uh, but I, as you guys saw with the KFX 450R, I sent my suspension out to Rocket Run and I love those shocks. I think you can get really, really nice shocks that are built specifically just for you when you send them out that way. Protection wise, I would choose all DRW stuff, which he did in here. And uh, the tires also, I mean, this would probably be a trail quad. So I believe the GBC's front and rear are six plies because I would probably want to go with a six ply tire if I'm going to be trail riding the thing. I would maybe try to go for orange plastics if you can get them. You, you probably can't get orange plastics, but that's pretty much the only thing different that I would do. I'd stick with the OEM, OEM rims. There, there's nothing wrong with those. You don't really need bead locks or anything for mild trail riding and whatnot. So yeah, man, I think it's a really solid build. So that's going to wrap it up for this one. You guys let me know in the comment section below, would you build, if you had a warrior and you had to do it, not focusing on performance mods, would you choose these colors? What would you do differently? Would you do different tires? Whatever you guys think, let me know in the comment section below. One thing I will say is I probably would update the lights because they're looking like they're a little bit whooped, even in just like replacements. They were kind of yellowed in some of the pictures. Let's see if we can find one real quick. You kind of see it there. Right there, you can kind of see it. I think that if they were freshened up or maybe like, I'm not sure what I would do there. Maybe get the LEDs like I have on the Banshee that still have the great, just kind of to update the look just a little bit. So that's one little difference I would do. But let me know what you guys would do with this thing. If you guys are interested in submitting your bike for Bike of the Week, you can shoot me a DM at Michael Sabo 350 and I will get back to you. If I don't get back to you, I do apologize. I get quite a few submissions. I can't get back to everybody, but I appreciate everybody that sends them in. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below, even if it's just for the algorithm. And until next week, I will see you guys then. Peace out. Mm -hmm.